Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I want to talk about Enneagram 10, the hero. And I say 10 here to spark some creativity for you all. I know the Enneagram believes there are only nine types, but perhaps if we thought about the box, what mindsets could come about? What other parts can we see? What other developments can we see in a person's psychology? Yeah, the Enneagram is a system of development and it talks about how you have developed to see the world. So your unique worldview, what you have learned from your experiences growing up as a kid. And this is very important if you want to understand yourself. That's why this video is very important for all of you. So the Enneagram 10, it describes a certain archetype, an archetype that Carl Jung studied very intensely. Namely, the hero archetype. And you know, everyone has talked about the heroes. Heroes have been portrayed in fiction for a very long time. What are the distinguishing qualities of a hero? Well, first of all, heroes believe that when there is a will, there is a way. Heroes have a positive quality. They believe there is always a solution. Things can be fixed. Things can be made better. We can solve our problems. We can deal with issues. We can face up to and to take care of the things that are happening around us. Enneagram tends the heroes have another very important quality. And that is, I can save that world. I can do this. I can take care of this. The Enneagram 10 places importance on doing and acting and standing up to and saving and taking control of and dealing with issues around them. So the hero is an aggressive type in the sense that they will be the ones that stand up when a dragon emerges. They are the ones that want to stand up and fight for what they believe in. They are the ones looking for a chance to prove themselves. They are the ones that are, in everything they are doing, trying to prove themselves to other people. Look, I can do it. Look at me. I am a hero. I can take care of these things. Look at me. I have a solution. I can help you. I can take care of this. I can make this better. So the hero, unlike the Enneagram 2, comes from this desire to prove themselves. And from this desire to stand up and to do what other people can't. So this is not a nurturing archetype. This is not an archetype of trying to take care of other people. This is an archetype of trying to exercise their will to other people. So the Enneagram 10 places itself righteously among the 8, 9 and 1 archetypes. It is about one's desires and one's will and one's wishes for the world. So the hero, like the other types, has strong desires that they believe are important for how they want the world to be. And they are control-oriented archetypes. So they want to control the world in some way and they want the world to somehow adhere to their will. How does the 10 stand about in difference with the other types? Well, first, yeah, sure, you can argue the hero has some of the innocence of the 9. The hero does have that positive thinking that nines often possess. Dream thinking, utopian thinking, seeing the best in a situation, seeing what can be, seeing the positive in something. But in difference to the nine, the Enneagram 10 has an aggressive personality. The hero wants to act and do something where the nine wants to think about something. The, t the nine wants to envision a dream reality or how things could be at their best if we were all living in harmony, if we were all in peace with one another. The Enneagram 10 wants things to happen, so they want to take action and make decisions and control the situation to, make, to act out what they think is right. So that's very important. The 10 comes from a position of action, where the nine comes from a position of Sometimes, when negative, passivity and apathy. The Enneagram 10, the hero, comes, when negative, from a position of recklessness. Recklessness in standing and jumping at opportunities, going too fast into a situation without thinking, becoming arrogant, thinking they can deal with everything, taking everything on their shoulders, and believing they can fix any problem, when in reality, they are not always the best fit person to deal with everything. So the hero has a set of issues in that sense. They can be prone to going too far in proving themselves for other people. 
they can take on too much responsibility. They can take on more than they can handle. They may say yes to tasks and missions that are beyond their level. And they don't always dare to show weakness or vulnerability. Yeah, when Carl Jung described this type, he said that showing weakness was the hero's biggest fear. It was hard for the Enneagram 10 to show them their fears and vulnerabilities to other people, to let other people know that they couldn't do something, to admit to weakness, to admit to being unable, to admit to not being able to do something. The Enneagram 10 can be well understood in relation to Enneagram 1. Why? Because the one, the rebel or reformer archetype, is always focused on that same quality of aggression, of fighting, putting up a fight, standing up against. The Enneagram 1 can sometimes see itself as the rebel standing up against the system, fighting against what is wrong. And you know, where the Nines and the heroes are idealists that focus on the best. The one is a critical thinker. The one is an aggressive critical thinker. So the one, they look at the situation and they say, this is how it should be instead. This is what we should do differently. Come on, I'm tired of how you do this. Let me take over, let me fix this, let me put this right. Okay, you seem incapable. Okay, fine, I'll do it instead. The Enneagram one, takes over, wants to put better, wants to change things, wants to reform things, wants to make things better, sometimes at the, at the problem of imposing themselves and their will on other people, interfering, criticizing, dismantling, attacking other people to put themselves ahead and to show a better way. So the critical nature of the rebel Paired with the aggressive nature of the rebel can make them people, forceful agents of change. They can be the people that are pushing for a revolution, an overthrowing of the, what exists and what we have in the world right now. The hero, they are also coming from this reckless or aggressive nature. Putting their will forward, showing themselves, being the ones that stand but not against what is wrong, but rather for what they believe in or for what they think is right. The hero shows themselves when there is a chance to do something good. The rebel shows themselves when there is a chance to so stop something that is wrong. So the hero is standing in the middle between Enneagram 9 and Enneagram 1. And perhaps that's why it's such a good fit to call it Enneagram 10. What I've learned when I was digging into the hero was I shared a whole lot of these qualities in myself. I realized that, yeah, I might have some of these issues. Uh, it might be true that I am struggling with some of these problems. You know, that's why the Enneagram is so great. It tells you things about yourself that are perhaps slightly embarrassing and um, shows you some of your blind spots, shows you some of your issues, shows you some of your struggles. My struggles have always been trying to be the hero, trying to be the one that takes care of and saves the situation. Whenever something goes wrong, I have to be the one that fixes it. Whenever something is bad, I should have taken responsibility. I should have done something to make it better. Whenever something bad happens, oh God, I can't, uh, whenever, I, like, whenever something appears that I can't do, I stress the fuck out of it. Like, I become so stressed by it because I'm so stressed by revealing to other people that I'm too weak or that I can't do it or that I'm not capable of something. So I take on things that I can't do and I often don't dare to ask for help because asking for help that's revealing weakness to other people that is revealing that maybe i'm not good at everything and you know the perfect image the hero can present to the world can in that sense appear like a facade a facade that you put onto the world because you show this can-do attitude towards everyone but in reality 
it, there might not be much behind it. Or in reality, you are also sometimes weak. Sure, you can be strong, but you are also sometimes weak. And I don't show people when I am weak. I don't make videos when I'm struggling. Okay, I've tried to a few times, but I don't like it. I believe in showing strength and I believe in putting forward a good ideal for people. And people have sometimes said that I put forward an impossible ideal, an ideal people can't live up to. And there, I think, what the hero can sometimes do is make other people feel incapacitated. Other people can also solve problems. Other people can also fix issues. I am not the only person in the room. I have to note this, that there are other people in there, and if I hold back, if I don't say anything, if I sometimes hold, keep my mouth, perhaps other people will see their own power, perhaps other people will step forward, perhaps other people will reveal their strengths. And let me tell you, one of the hardest things that I ever went through was stepping down. When I was in the Green Party, my biggest issue was stepping down. I couldn't step down. I had to always stand up. And then I realized that I was kind of overshadowing other people, new up and coming people that could also become great. And I was overshadowing a lot of people and I realized I had to take a break. I had to resign from some positions, maybe take a more background role, let other people go forward. And I felt like I was becoming bleached out, invisible. It was really difficult for me to climb into that role. I don't necessarily like being extroverted or putting myself forward. I've always struggled to put myself forward. I always uh, become a little bit critical of myself. I can always be very like demanding of myself. I tend to be, for the most, a lone wolf. I do things my own way. I push myself forward. I solve problems, but I'm kind of an individual in everything I do. I'm always an individual in every task I take on and everything I do. I am myself, the leader figure that shows up and takes care of a situation and then goes off on my own while everyone else is chatting and having a good time and engaging with each other. I was always the person that, you know, came out, held a speech and then withdrew to perhaps a very private circle of a few close friends or perhaps to the comfort of my own. I went on my own walks, took breaks away from everyone because, you know, the extroverted part of this was very difficult for me. I was a person that wanted to put myself forward and to show and prove myself. But I was not an extrovert. I did not want to interact with other people. I didn't want to engage with other people. I didn't want that exchange. And that's perhaps why I came to like YouTube so much. So much. What I've come to learn as I'm digging through these mindsets is they fit very strongly with certain functions. What function in particular here am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about our judgment. I believe that our judgment or our perception is closely related to whether we are to our 8, 9, 1 or 10. If uh, we have the 8 mindset, we have the desire to use our judgment to rule and to take responsibility for the group and for making the right decisions, thinking things through, making sure everyone has made the right decision, making sure that we have engaged and considered all options and done the best we could, thinking critically what mistakes do we need to avoid, what potential harms could engage, what rule of law could I put forward to take make things better. The hero is kind of coming from the opposite of this. The hero has no critical judgment. The hero has a positive judgment. How can I use my judgment to show a positive example? How can I judge to set a positive example? How can I use my independence to set a positive example? How can I engage in diplomacy and communication 
to present a positive image to other people. The hero also comes from this perspective of aggression or forwardness, outgoingness. How can I use my judgment to put myself forward in life, to move forward, to make things happen, to make changes occur in the world around me? You know, some people use their judgment or perceiving to anticipate what is to come and to prepare against it. I use my judgment to put myself forward, to look at the next step, what's my next move, what am I going to do after this? But some people come from the perspective of what can I do to avoid that or if that comes up, how can I adjust to that? I focus on what my next move is, what am I going to do? So I speculate, I think, what is my next move going to be? What move was, would be the best? Where would that move take me? Or where would that move perhaps take me? And I come from the perspective of uh, positivity or optimism or good-naturedness in the sense of what be is the best action I could take right now? What is the best thing I could say? And there is not necessarily any critical thinking involved in this process. I'm not critically analyzing if it's really going to be nice or if it's really going to be good. And that's why I have people around me that are a lot better at this. People around me that will say, Eric, you're rushing forward recklessly again. Oh, Eric, you're doing something stupid. Stop for a second. Think things through. The magical words I sometimes forget. Think things through. So what I'm wondering now is, can any of you relate to this? Have any of you been in this situation? Have any of you had this mindset? Have any of you grown up thinking about this? Perhaps Enneagram 10 is the archetype I should be considering. Perhaps this is the archetype that best fits me. Along with, of course, a few other numbers. You can never just settle with one. You have to see how they all work together. Learn about all mindsets. Learn about yourself. Tell me in the comments down below what mindset do you have and how do you feel about the hero mindset. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.